feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign 8,000 people, man. I've been inside more people than Will Chamberlain. 8,000 people. <laughs> Welcome back to FAQ The Madness. We respectfully exercise our First Amendment right to publish interactions with government officials through the unbiased view of a camera. Let's jump into another rep. Recording. What is up, everybody? It is your boy, Craig. I am Fact the Madness, and I am happy to be with you once again, bringing to you some of the things that I'm doing in this crazy world we call America. This crazy place that we call America. My country, tis of thee. Anyway, I have a friend which I briefly introduced to you guys. 8,000 people, man. I've been inside more people than Will Chamberlain. 8,000 people. <laughs> Say that again. I like that. <laughs> I've, been I've, been in, I've been inside more people. I've been inside more people than Will Chamberlain. That's funny. And Will Chamberlain. <laughs> As a surgeon. Guaranteed. Awesome. That, that, was, that was in my professional career. His name is Steve Jaddick. What I called him when we were in the Air Force together in basic training so long ago. And... I now have the the need, uh, the desire to check out his story as he is related to me, uh, and that requires uh, some public records request. Doing so, it seems, is not quite as easy as I thought it was going to be for a number of reasons, which I will kind of break down for you. I actually had some inspiration, uh, and I spoke with uh, another Steve ironically a uh, different steve i am free steve and he kind of broke some things out for me so i'm going to give you a brief little glimpse into some of the things that he has done a uh, story that he's working on and then i'm going to kind of go into the story as it relates to me and my friend steve you may notice or not but uh i have pink on um save the rack is what it says uh, I happen to be a child of a person who is a survivor. My mother is a breast cancer survivor. When I was in, uh, I think it was my junior year, maybe my senior year, uh, we found out that she had breast cancer. She was diagnosed with breast cancer. I, I will never forget it. I think I've told the story before. I was riding my bike. My mother told me that she needed to speak with me. I took my bike. Normally when, my, when your mother tells you she needs to speak with you, at least my mother, um, you figure out what it's all about. I went through a thousand things in my mind, if I can remember correctly, trying to figure out what I had done wrong. Turns out that she wants to speak with me about uh, her diagnosis. A lot of uh, things that we had to go through, a lot of difficult hurdles that we had to climb uh, once she got that diagnosis. So for those of you who have had to or had someone who has dealt with it, whether they lost the battle or whether they are fighting or whether they won, um, we honor in October um, breast cancer awareness. So that's why I wear pink. I don't have a whole lot of pink things, but uh, I pulled something out. I think I got it from the eBay store. So it says save a rack, not Iraq, but a rack. So, all right. So let's check out this video. It says records denied, guilty, appeal filed. What's next? I will have a description of it in the, I mean, I will have a link to it in the description. Um, and I'll try to figure out exactly where it is that I needed to point to. Then we'll go into the story of my Steve, my friend Jaddick. I'll call him Jaddick because in this case, we're talking about two different Steve. So Jaddick is his last name. I thought it was a cool name. So I've always called him Jaddick. Anyway, so let's check it. Just check out I Am Freeze video, a little bit of it, and then we'll talk about it.
Hey everyone, I am free. It's August 21st, 2024. I'm in the city of University Place, Pierce County, Washington State. I am heading on over back to the Pierce County Environmental Service Building, which houses Parks and Rec and Public Works for sewage control for wastewater specifically. In there are some meeting rooms. I'm releasing a story tomorrow, so when you get this, it'll be after the story releases regarding a public record story I went and worked on on August 6th of 2024 here. And in that, as you can see, Deputy Director Wintermute, as well as Recreation Supervisor Kim Wargo, were just making it way more difficult, way beyond anything they needed to make it to get these public records. I was working on a story about an elderly person trying to get records and were frust uh, frustrated by the process and in not being able to do so, had one of their children, adult children, reach out to me to go and see if there are issues there. <laughs> If you've watched any of, of Steve's videos, and I highly recommend that you watch his videos. He is very good at what he does. He is very thorough. He follows up like there is no one better that does it better than he does as far as uh, follow up and figuring things out. No, no one does it better. As simple as that. But, but the thing that I wanted to point out is, is that it appears that he's quite far from where it is that he's going to be doing his audit. He's been talking for a few minutes, maybe, a, you know, a few seconds, looks like a minute and 46 seconds. And he's walked quite a long ways. Again, I encourage you to watch it. But the reason why I mention it is because after it's all said and done, I think the fact that he's walked this distance comes into play. So just want to point that out. Boy, are there issues. And they're really just issues of obstinance and unwillingness to be helpful and assist in accordance with Washington administrative codes. And they're playing a runaround game now just because, in my opinion, they're annoyed, frustrated, irritated, what have you, that I was there working on this. So I'm going back to request a review of an appeal. Now this is this is his edit. Hello. Hey, is Nathan available? I'm sorry. Nathan. Uh, uh, Nathan. Rose. Uh, Nathan Rose. Yeah. Hold on one second. Thanks. Uh, thanks for your patience. They're not currently at their desk right now. Um, is there a message I could take or uh, potentially like their phone number or email I could provide? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> so who's available after him? Uh, so uh, in regards to um, Nathan, um, I can see if maybe there's, um, yeah, we could have our, I see if our deputies in. Um, in regarding the... Uh, What's it in regards to, as far as like the department? Maybe I could. Now, I mean, anybody worth their weight in gold, if you will, can see that this gentleman, for some reason, right off the back, is not wanting to. Well, he maybe this seems he's, the question he asks is it's in regards to what, but he took so long to try to figure out how to ask that question. Uh, and again, this is just one of the things that I. That I love about the way Steve is, is that he almost makes it so that this guy cannot, he doesn't give him any wiggle room at all. <laughs> it's fascinating. It's, it's, it's really cool to watch. And I think in fact, if there's anybody that I want to model my actions, uh, after it would definitely be Steve. I mean, he's a, he's an absolute professional in what he does. Like, see if there's someone that's over that department uh, that can help you out. Public records. Public records? Yeah. Hold on one second. Uh, yeah, Nathan's currently out of the office today. Um, and then I was uh, letting known that the uh, tomorrow morning uh, they'd be back in the office. Um, and as far as the, um, 
the public records request. Um, now, <laughs> I, like, I didn't notice this before, but look at this guy's body language. I mean, his body language. His body language is nothing but I'm I'm lying. I'm not being truthful. I'm not being I mean, I'm not being transparent. I'm hiding something. I'm keeping something away from you. I don't want to show you something. He's looking all around everywhere, but in Steve. I mean, Steve is obviously behind the, the glass. Occasionally you'll see some a reflection of him. But this guy is trying to get rid of Steve. I mean, there's no question about it. Were you just needing a form uh, for a public records request then? Or was it in regards to... I don't need a form. Okay. And it was just uh, then questions about the public records request? Well, yeah, it has to be in terms of one of the things I need someone above Nathan. Oh, okay. So who is that? Uh, so... Um... Is it Kyle? Uh, yeah, so Kyle is also out of the office today. That would be... Is the director here? Uh, he's the deputy director. Yes, yeah, the uh, director. Oh, Roxanne. Uh, let me um, yeah, let me double check to see if she's in uh, as well. Um, but yeah, Kyle's unfortunately out of the office as well. Um, and he would be, I believe, above uh, Nathan. Uh, so yeah, let me go double check to see if Roxanne is in. Okay. Uh, thanks again for waiting. Uh, so uh, she's in meetings. Uh, and unfortunately, um, it's until 4.45. Um, so I can meet her at 4.45? Yeah, if you'd be willing to wait. Um, yeah. The, uh, 4.45 is when she should be out of her meetings. Sure. Is Kim Wargo available? Uh, Kim is also out. Uh, gotcha. So everyone's just gone. Yeah. And um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, her meetings go until 4.45. And she'd be like that. Convenient. Yeah, so here's here's the problem. I need someone to address this because I'm getting no response by email. So what do I need to do? Uh, so this has got to be about my convenience, man. I can't I can't have you guys responding with an email to which I utilize administrative codes and statutes so that we're all on the same operating page and then get no response and then have you guys conveniently saying to me that everyone's unavailable. To be honest, it seems completely the opposite. The fact that you went back there two times now, it took an inordinate amount of time to get a response about everything. You obviously weren't meeting with Nathan or Kyle because you said they're gone. So right. who were you talking to? Uh, just the people who work around their offices because I'm not sure what their schedules are uh, as far as... Uh, like it took like five minutes to figure out that Kyle and Nathan were gone? Uh, yeah, because sometimes if they're like, you know, offices closed, they might have a, because we have like conference rooms uh, throughout the building too. So I didn't know if they were like on site, but just not in their, mm -hmm. in their main office. And I just wanted to make sure that you have the, you know, the correct information. Yeah. So I need to resolve this, man. Okay. Yeah, and so, um, so whoever is next in line, there needs to be a designee. If the PRO is not here, the PRO has a designee. So that's who I'm looking to talk to. Okay. It's pretty straightforward. I just want to talk to him about the, uh, the denial and I'm asking for a review of that. Okay, great. Yeah, and um, I believe that's Roxanne. Um, as it okay. So, I I don't know if if the reason why I am so fascinated or interested in this story. Well, first of all, he he, he does a very good job of 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 what he what he does. I mean, there's no question in my mind that Steve. Steve does a very good job at at breaking down the story and presenting it to us. So it's interesting from from the get go. But but I I see a number of things that I think other people probably aspire to be like or have in their toolbox of things that they want to do when they go on an audit. One. He's polite. He's to the point. He doesn't seem fearful at all of the things that he wants to accomplish. He holds this person accountable to what would be reasonable actions. You're going to go back there. You say that the person's not there. It shouldn't take too long for you to figure out 
that the person's not there if they're actually not there and then come back and report they're not there then he asks for the next person he knows who it is that he wants to speak to from the bottom on up and then after that he has a specific request that he wants to make um, as far as like the, she's the, I think she's the director uh, overseeing it all. Uh, okay. Well, look, what I'm, what I'm trying to get to, too, is you guys are doing exactly what an elderly man has stated was happening. You guys are abusing members of the public, especially elderly folk. And I think me covering this story right now, everything about which when I came here was just to see how your public records process works. Unbelievable how bad it is. And it seems like if someone like me who is up on code statutes and case law is having this much difficulty, it really seems very credible that this elderly man who is trying to get assistance is in fact getting poor treatment from the Parks and Recreation Department. So probably what would be best, because when you look in the wax, the general model rules for this stuff is that the Attorney General has given advice through Title 44 of the wax chapter 14, that you guys do what you can to be as accommodating as possible to members of the public. And you guys are not being as accommodating as possible. And in fact, it's either Nathan or Kyle that were intentionally misdirecting me. So, I'm Okay, so I think we get a fairly good uh, understanding of what's going on here. Uh, by the way, that office directly back there, straight back, uh, whose office is that? The guy who had the red shirt on? Um, I think that's the, uh, I think that's one of the planning and public works uh, offices. Gotcha. Who was, who was the guy in the red shirt that came out? I'm sorry? The guy in the red shirt that came out? He had a laptop, glasses on. <laughs> Brunette hair? Um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. On whose office is that? Um... And it's one of the planning and public works uh, offices. Yeah, whose office though? Yeah, I'm not sure. Can office. you find out for me? Thanks. Appreciate it. Oh, bravo. I mean, like I said, you you can't do much better than what Steve does here, and I, I think that. I mean, like I said, he's a professional at what he does. I don't remember exactly when it happened, but um, I've kind of developed a friendship and uh, relationship with Steve. And so after seeing this, I reached out. I mean, you can call it what you want. I might be kissing up to him a little bit, but I say you are truly the best at the public records game and straight follow up and follow through. Bravo. Immediately after I wrote this, I reached out to Steve. Uh, I think I emailed him. But he reached back out to me and I outlined to him uh, my public records uh, experience. Now, I had previously had an experience with the Social Security Administration office. And um, if you haven't seen the story, which is one of my earliest, uh, it's in fact, it's the very beginnings of why I started um, kind of the First Amendment auditing type uh, thing. because I had to do business for my mother. Many of you guys will remember or know my mother has now what, uh, what we've been calling dementia, but it's, it's a uh, diagnosis Alzheimer's. And so I had to begin doing business for my mother. Uh, and when I began to do so, I wanted to do and capture my experience uh, that I, in, in its entirety, because I had to do some things also for my, with or for my sister, have a record so that my sister can follow what it is that I would be doing. And it's kind of a daunting task for my sister to do. Um, and you know, that might be something that I might do a story about as well, uh, because some of the things that my mother, the relationship that my sister and my mom, uh, my mom have causes my mother to react to my sister differently than she does to me. That's how I started trying to figure out the First Amendment uh, thing, freedom of, of press, um, freedom of speech, those kind of things. The ability, the right to be able to film in public because I wanted to document the experience and the business that I was doing for my mom, but the SSA would not have me do it. They would not allow it.
Jadik, uh, has a, 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 a very interesting story that we are going to begin covering on Tuesdays. I do uh, Facts of Fact of Madness, and I've invited him to join my show and tell his story from the very beginning to where he is currently. And part of that is uh, is an interaction that he had with uh, the Tarpon County Sheriff's Office, or at least the uh, Tarpon County Jail. Uh, and a certain set of things happened to him Long story short, I believe uh, his rights were violated. Um, and so in trying to figure out the story, I asked him um, to, to to give me some video. He submitted some video uh, footage for you. He has, he has gotten a hold of some video footage. And then I myself submitted some public records request. So... That's where the story kind of where I needed Steve's expertise in trying to wade through the bullshit. I kept feeling that not only was it that I wasn't getting answers, but that that they were also trying to make it like put up these barriers specifically with regards to um a financial barrier because I received word that the request that I made was going to cost me about 500 to $700. My channel is not monetized. Um, so I don't, this would be on my own dime. And although I'm, I, you know, I, I I've known Steve for a very long time. I've known Jadik for a very long time. I don't really have $700 that I, that I'm capable of dropping down for a public records request no matter what kind of information it would give me. I'm going to kind of go over the emails that I received. Jadik was arrested and they placed him in a, in a restraint chair. He was placed in a restraint chair and he claims, and I know I haven't been able to verify this independently, but he says that they also use stun cuffs. So I decided that I was going to do a public records request. And my public re records request for both of them was basically essentially the same. The most recent policy for use of restraint chair, documented use of restraint chair from a date to another date. Uh, and I'll explain why I did this. Include the report or any or any report or justification for use, the approximate duration of use, any complaints investigation generated, any complaints investigation generated due to the use of restraint chair, uh, internal or external. Meaning, the reason why I said that is because he was brought into the facility from another place and I don't wasn't certain whether or not they only use it inside the facility or not so I included that as well and I said any serious bodily injury and or death occurring during use within the above prescribed period that, and again there's there are two different public requests that I did and one of them was this one which I'm reading and the other one was for the stun cuff so but they essentially are the same so I got this reply back from them and it said that the letters, this letters clarify what information you're seeking from the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office in regards to the internal investigation part of your request. Are you looking for the summary report or entire file? If any, please let us know so we may pull the appropriate records. Thank you. Now, we went back and forth a number of times. Um, I'm not going to specifically show each of the uh, emails, but to kind of summarize what occurred, they asked for clarification. I responded to try to clarify what it was that I was looking for. Um, I didn't want to tip my hand with regards to what specific dates I was looking for. So I put a, a range out there and I felt like if I let them know that I wanted to, I wanted it to come to me via email, that if there was anything that they had, that they would be able to send it to me and it wouldn't cost anything. Well, after about two or three different um, uh, replies back and forth, they came back and said that that the request that I was making was going to cost about five hundred to seven hundred dollars. Now I was like, "Well, what the hell could it possibly be that would cause it to be 
500 to 700 dollars if what i'm asking you to do is to send me um you know stuff via email i did end up calling and i said look um because what i what i then said was can you just send me the policy because I asked, I, I, I clarified that I just wanted to see the policy because I felt that if they, if I got an understanding of what the policy was with regards to the use of the restraint chair, I could then look at any video evidence that I had and see if they broke any policy after having seen the policy for both the use of uh, the restraint chair and stun cuffs. I added later on also any use of force policy that they had. I, I'm going to back up just a little bit. I'm still not. I, I'm not afraid to to ask these questions and do the back work that it, that's required. I'm just first of all, I'm not I'm not that great at it yet. I'm still kind of learning my way through it. But I, I always forget to record. It seems like uh, even though I worked in a call center, I I also forget to tell people that I that I'm or let them know that I'm recording because my understanding is that despite the fact that you are you may be in a state that is a one party state or another in general if you're going across state in this case I'm dealing with a Florida uh, uh, issue entity it's likely best that you just let all parties know involved that you are recording my point is is that I didn't record this interaction. I end up talking to um, the manager. Manager's name is Sean. I spoke with him um, and we began discussing uh, the relevant statute in Florida uh, that pertains to my request. It's, it's uh, Florida statute 119. Uh, and it talks about exemptions. It talks about fees, um, what you can ask for, what is public records, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, in the very beginning, general 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 state policy 119.01, general state policy on public records. It is the policy of this state that all state, county, and municipal records are open for personal inspection and copying by any person. Providing access to public records is a duty of each agency. I'll repeat that. Providing access to public records is a duty of each agency. That my approach was sound. So my approach to, first of all, make a public records request and ask for certain things. Uh, because I asked him, you know, he's, he lives in Washington, but he said, surely there are instances where they will try to charge you um, an exorbitant amount of money. But, but you have to do certain things to figure out why they're doing those things. For example, if there's any exemptions, um, but he basically said what you need to do, what an individual needs to do, what I need to do is to become very familiar with all of the public records uh, laws or statute, the public record statute for your state. Now, I've told you this before that I travel to a number of different places throughout the year because of family, um, it seems like there's going to be business opportunities that uh, I'm going to be uh, coming up against um, in the near future. So I'm going to have to travel to yet another state. So all of these states, one, I'm going to become familiar with the public records request, because when I go and I ask these questions over stories that I find, I think that making public records requests is going to be something that's going to be a standard for the way that I operate. So I'm going to become very familiar with the general state policy or the public records policies or statutes in each of the states. Those states are Indiana, that's where I was born, I have family there, Georgia, Florida. Um, I travel to Florida multiple times in a year, at least one time in a year. So I go through a number of states, one, uh, Alabama and Georgia. Then when we go to Indiana, we also travel through Ohio, Virginia, Utah, because we fly to Utah. And I think that's likely going to be the states that I'm going to need to. We've gone to DC, but I'm trying to capture, well, 
I would like it to be if they are in the same circuit. But, you know, the 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 public records statutes are very similar, but with, sometimes with some slight differences. So I'm going to have to understand that there are some differences and when there are, I'm going to need to know what they are. But he basically said, you need to understand what the public records law is, what the exemptions are, so that you can hold them accountable for when they exclude things or omit things. Uh, and they try to make it seem, or they try to claim that it's a, that's because of an exemption. Now, Steve told me that we can kind of see uh, how things played out with another story that he did. So I don't want to give this away. Again, go check out this this particular video. Let me make it big so you can see. Go check out this video. It's the records denied, guilty appeal filed, what next? Go check out that video and pay close attention to his style. His style, again, is very effective. And when I say effective, I mean, he just holds them to the fire. They can't get away. They can't, they can't wiggle away from, from Steve's. His Kung Fu is quite strong when he goes and he, he addresses uh, these government entities in person. Oh, hello. Hey, I was wondering if, where is the sort of admin office, I guess? Not here, no, not, not like an admin office. What are you looking for? Uh, I was looking to submit a records request. A records request? Uh, you have to call up to the main office to get up in the department. I, don't know. I, have to, I can't do it in person? You can go to Olympia. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's... Here. I, so are you a sorry i may misunderstand are you a state employee yeah oh okay great yeah i'd just like to make a verbal public records request with you then i know nothing about that i don't know what, i don't know how to take care of that oh if you got like i mean if you got a good memory or if you got a notepad records request for what records regarding Hang this on, just a sec. sure what the hell do you want me to do vibes? I mean, you're there to serve the public, even though you might be in an area where you perceive there are not to be very many people that can come. Even when you're not public facing, you should act as though it's, there is the potential for you to be public facing because this young lady clearly, I mean, she's kind of being rude just right off the, right off the back. Yeah. Just what I was saying. Uh, let's see. This is what he wrote. <laughs> yeah. He was He's haughty. wanting to submit a public records request. That's what I asked. For what? Records. Records? Yeah. Specific. Yep. Conde condescending and mocking. I mean, yeah. Like, so if you get like a notepad and a pen, I can just give I need it to, to know what kind of records you're looking for. Sure. I mean, Susie, I mean, either if you want to, I can tell you now if you want to memorize it or if you want to get a notepad and pen first. Okay. Uh, there's no one available to take your verbal request today. You're a state employee, right? I am a state employee. So, look, I, you seem like a really nice person, so I don't want to jam you up on this. Uh, in light of the differences with cities and counties as a state employee, I'm making a request right now, so it has to be taken. So if you want to just write it down. Me on camera. I don't know why he's doing that, James. Seeing I, since I'm a state employee, I have to take this. Yeah, it's covered in WAC 4414-0300. True to form, he's about to, he's about to break it down for you. This is his knowledge that he has on the scene of him being very familiar with the laws that pertain to the situation and the public records request that he's making. 
As you can see here from this root employee, she has likely not received Public Records Act training. Washington State Administrative Codes in Title 44, Chapter 14, Section 03006 state the following regarding walk-in and verbal requests. In-person requests. An agency must honor requests received in person during normal business hours. Per the Revised Codes of Washington, Title 42, Chapter 56, Section 80, Subsection 2, an agency should have its public records request form available at the office reception area so it can be provided to a walk-in requester. The form should be directed to the agency's public records officer. Oral requests. A number of agencies routinely accept oral public records requests, for example, asking to look at a building permit. Some agencies find oral requests to be the best way to provide certain kinds of records. However, for some requests, such as larger or complex ones, oral requests may be allowed but are problematic. So that, that kind of sets up how this young lady was. Apparently, she calls the cops. Nothing. Nothing? What brings you to this neck of the woods? What's that? I said, what brings you to this neck of the woods? All the employees are calling. You're kind of scaring them. Uh, scaring them doing a public records request? I don't know. What's going on? A public records request? I'm Sergeant Anson, by the way, doing audio video. Huh. Nice to no, meet you. No, please, Robert. Nice to meet you. What's yeah. your name, bud? Steve. Steve. What's your... Uh, uh, you got a, like a business card or anything? Badge number? Uh, my badge number is 291. Is this consensual? Is it consensual? Yes, yeah, is this a consensual encounter? We're just chatting here to figure out okay, what's so going on. No detention or anything? No. Okay, fair enough. No. Cool. Uh, so yeah, just trying to do a public records request. I was kind of about halfway into it before she just decided to be rude and not finish taking the records request. Oh. Okay, so. what, what are we looking for? Records. What type, what type of records? <laughs> Honestly, I'm working on a story. I don't want to share that now because if you guys go and tell them and they can clean something up, oh. kind of defeats the whole point of reporting on things. I can give you the URL for the public disclosure request. Well, I'm here. I mean, okay. yeah, I mean, I, I agree. You can certainly do it online. Yeah. yeah. Don't disagree yeah. with that. I see. Just looking to get it done while I'm here. And yeah, well, she said, I mean, yeah, just you're kind of aggressive, I guess, in your nature of questioning. Oh, oh hello. Hey, I was wondering if, where is the sort of admin office, I guess? Not here, no, not, not like an admin office. What are you looking for? Uh, I was looking to submit a records request. Hmm. So she was kind of freaked her out, hence why she's now locked herself in the office. So. Aggressive. That almost sounds like false reporting kind of action. Yep. Like, tipping into that zone. Well, I'm just... happy to show you the video footage to show that I'm okay. just as kind okay. and nice and polite as I am right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I right certainly on. wasn't going for the SWAT team mode against her trying to get my public records request. Right so on. I got uh, tips and leads about a story. Well, two things. One, that somebody believes there was some sort of a spill here, some sort of a contamination, and that then they went to go do a records request to try to get those records and were met with brusque, rude behavior, and boy, they were not off the mark. All right, boss. So she, uh, you know, she's going to take the records? From her? No, she's she's not. No, and she spoke with her supervisor. Yikes. That's not a thing. So, yeah, I mean, you know the proper channels, man. You can get on the state website. You can do your thing. So, I mean, obviously you realize this is a state agency, not a county or city. Yes. So cities and counties can kind of tweak it. Keep the right. state can't tweak it at all. So in the administrative codes and Title 44, Chapter 14. Okay. It just lays it out really clear in Section 03006. They have to take it on a walk-in verbal basis. Okay. Correct chains of... Uh, the correct chains? I'm doing it exactly as well, the Attorney I, General says. I understand, but today you're not going to get it. It'd be like right now, if I asked you to do a public records request, you'd probably take it because you've received... You wouldn't. No. <laughs> I love I love how he does that. He's like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> All right, so so I mean again, I, I encourage you to check out uh, Steve I am Free's channel. Not only that uh, first one that we looked at, but this one as well. I believe that what I'm going to do specifically with the story for Jadik is I'm going to continue to go down the public records uh, hole.
because I think that through understanding what the policies are, looking at any footage, trying to figure out why there's any lapse in any footage, uh, and trying to whittle down specifically at certain points, I can not only get the information I'm looking for, but I can certainly make it as cost effective as possible. Even though it says that you can go and inspect this, uh, these things, that they have to make it available to you, but they still will charge you this exorbitant amount uh, for inspecting it. And I can't inspect because I'm not uh, in, in Florida. I'm in, in North Carolina. So, I mean, I could do it state by state right now. I'm, in, I'm doing one in Florida. Um, there's plenty of uh, people in Florida that I could probably reach out to. Um, Foshin, for example, I can do Liberty Troll. Uh, James Madison's out there. Uh, AWB is in Florida. So if there's any state that I can go to, um, as far as uh, having some people that are already in Florida to pick their brains on, it would be Florida. So um, I think I think we made a good choice with uh, just, you know, uh, just coincidentally having a longtime friend reach out to me and say, hey, you know, I had this situation go on. Um, and I kind of want uh, some people to, to lay eyes on not only his business, um, blood, sweat, um, but also the situation that he had go on with, uh, with the Tarpon Police Department and Tarpon Sheriff Sarah's office. Shout out to, to Steve, I am free, Gandalf, some of you I even may know him as. Literally minutes after I sent him a text, uh, or an email. I can't remember which one it was. But not very long after I sent him the message, did he give me a call and 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 sit, sat with me for maybe a good uh, 35 minutes um, telling me, walking me through uh, his thought process, how he does things, why he does things, and then give me kind of some examples of what to look for as far as a video and what he's talking about. He actually executes understanding the, the law knowing what he wants from the public records request, taking the information, not at gospel necessarily, um, what uh, the, the tips and leads are telling him, but thoroughly go through and try to see if it matches up to what they're saying. And sometimes in, this, in many cases, he finds that it is true. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, how I can actually execute um, getting these public records and getting information and doing some investigative journalism, which will kind of uncover some of these things that uh, we all know are out there. History tells you, you know, we had the Tuskegee Airmen uh, syphilis thing, you know, all those kind of things that we know the government has been doing, testing on its own people. You know, they can't figure out a way to do it without doing that, those kind of things in secrecy. So it's probably good that we are weary or leery of of what government big government is doing um, but I like to kind of take an approach where I need to find out the information and see you know what it tells me I mean you hear people talk about how the right and the left has this agenda and they're telling us these things and it may or may not be true uh, it may be motivated politically I mean the Democrats aren't running because they don't want to be in office and the republicans aren't running because they don't want to be in office and there's there's some uh there's plenty of fat to go around for whoever is in office right i mean there's a reason why they want to be in office so i mean we can't fault them for wanting to get there but it doesn't necessarily mean that they just have to be right just because your set of rules are what are this and the other set of rules are what they are. Which kind of brings me to what something that I say all the time. Whether you be on the right or the left of an issue, policies, politically, um, as far as I'm concerned, I just want you to meet me somewhere in the middle. Because if we continue to to go to the extremes of any issue, we're going to continuously go further away from each other. But if we meet somewhere in the middle, we're likely gonna find some common ground where we can make an understanding, where we can get to the, the bottom, get to the bottom of these issues.
get to the bottom of what it is that we perceive to be happening when we talk to an officer like this and they say things that are so far-fetched that make us say whoa what there's certainly nothing that can be said about steve's approach at because at the end of the day the way he does it despite his appearance is he's very professional he's very knowledgeable and he's simply trying to present uh, a story that will allow people to have information about the way government is operating and there are some questions that you should be asking at the end of the day what do we want just want our government to do what they need to do what we pay them to do what we pay our tax dollars or give us some of it back my name is craig i am fact of madness until we see you next time peace thank you for watching if you have a video you'd like for us to cover, use the submit link in the description or pinned comment. If you enjoyed this one, consider subscribing and hit the bell to be notified of future content. Be sure to check out all of the other content we have for your edutainment. We will continue to respectfully exercise our First Amendment rights and publish the interactions we have with government officials. Remember to like, share, and leave a comment. It's the easiest way for you to let us know your thoughts about our channel. I wanna be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and to be put down. It ain't your place, all this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it. The news, if it's some loose shit, a stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh.